Hi, this is Nelly from InMind. This is Anton. And today we're going to talk about fraud, scanners, fake identities, and how to protect yourself against those risks. This problem touches everyone. Please watch this video until the end. We want to address you a very important topic today. It's about the investor scams. Can you actually identify a scammer, especially when it's investor? Well, this is what this video is about. Unfortunately, during the pandemic, the activity of those fake investors has increased largely. We have experienced it multiple times only in the past few weeks. Thanks to our members of our platform, we were quickly informed about those incidences and blocked their accounts right away. But this video is going to explain to you about the precautions, tips and the advice that you can take from us in order to secure your successful journey with your startup. Unfortunately, the mass media doesn't cover it much often as we would like to. Therefore, we were studying articles and looking at through the internet all the possible solutions in order to help you to understand how to protect your business and how to avoid those fake scammers. Let's face it, we all know who the scammers are. It's quite easy to identify them, at least from the first glance. But then when you start digging into deeper, you start to understand that this industry is also evolving. They may have a nice investor's profile and even well-designed LinkedIn account. They may have a corporate email an awesome fancy looking website. But how can you actually identify a real scammer? How can you protect yourself? And how can you verify them? This is the question we're about to raise right now. Usually the scams are evolving and they are evolving much faster right now, pretending to be new offices, pretending to be new VC funds. This is what makes it more complicated. In the reality, their ugly plan is only to play on the vulnerable point of all the startup entrepreneurs, the big wish and motivation to get your startup funded. They pretend like they want to invest in a startup when in reality all they want to do is to trick you out of your money by charging large upfront fees or using other schemes. So you should be very careful. Don't be naive and blithely running for blurry investors promises. Well, if you're still thinking that this is not a big deal, unfortunately you're wrong. This is happening much more often than we expect it to be and we have to become up prepared. Mass media doesn't cover it, nor can you find a lot of articles in the internet about how to identify fake investor scams. What you can find is a lot of information about the startup scams. This is something that is no surprise to us. But what if the scammer is not a startup? What is the opposite? The actual investor. So what comes there? Allow me to share with you our own experience. During several years of working with startups, we were contacted many times by startup founders who asked us to check the investors and who pretended to be the representatives of the Swiss family offices. They actually showed us an interest in investments. However, strangely, they were actually putting some weird conditions at the end. In each case, there was a website on .ch domain name, fancy description of an old Swiss family office address, phone numbers, everything that you could even imagine. Luckily, in those cases, founders reached us out being based in Switzerland and deeply involved in the local investment ecosystem, they actually told us that something was going wrong. We could understand that and identify that. The office address that they claimed was legit actually was in some country unknown site places. Phone numbers kept silent and the names of the team were absolutely unknown for us and to our network, which can be true for real investors in the small Swiss business circle, right? But can you imagine how many other entrepreneurs were cheated before and after? Once the InMind platform began to grow and gain traction, we started to identify new fake investors coming largely as waves and messaging to our community members claiming that they want to invest and ask money in advance to cover some insurance charges or bank fees. Luckily, we could identify them and block quite fast thanks to our growing community and our systems. And after a few such cases in order to avoid scammers from both sides, we implemented a verification service. When our team has a call with the new member of the platform, asks questions and verifies their identity and actuality of the contacts. Since then, the verified page shows you that you can trust the profile of investors or a startup on a platform because it was verified by our team members. However, this is not a panacea. Don't think of it because some users still forget to pass the verification process or just don't pay attention to this. 
Below there is an example of the real email from the fake investors for a startup founder of Finmine. As you can see, just by looking at it, nothing looks weird to you. How about you leave a comment in the section below and tell us what you think is wrong here and then the first message as well. Finally, during the last month, we were also contacted by such investors via WhatsApp. Here are also the proofs of such conversations that we are forced and obliged to have every day, unfortunately. For us, it was an easy thing to identify the fake request. First of all, because we were not in need of the investments. And secondly, because we already knew that something was going wrong with the phone number. So we started contacting them and we started to look at their addresses, contacting the service companies in that area to see exactly who are they and what are they looking for. Hey, you're still listening? Well, good thing that you're doing it, because now I'll pass the mic to Nelly, and she will talk to you about the tips that you should take in the precaution. Tip number one. Communicate only with verified professionals. So, if you are a registered and verified startup on InMind.com platform, then in addition to plenty of further advantages, but that's not the topic of this video, you have an amazing chance to be sure that you communicate with verified market professionals. So if you are contacted by an investor from a mind platform, make sure that you see the verified page on his investor's profile. In case you don't see this page, please ask him to pass the verification procedure. Or in any case, you can contact in mind support team via live chat on the website or email support at inmind.com. If you communicate with investors on other online platforms via email or social media, then you have to be even more careful, cautious, and follow our next instructions to be sure that you protect yourself from possible scammers. Tip number two, identify their investors' experience. What I mean here, if you were contacted by an unknown investor, VC or business angel or any other type of investor, first, you try to check any available information about this investor in the internet, website, social media profiles, etc. If you did not find anything informative, about his investor's experience in the internet or some referrals or mentions in the media, then simply don't hesitate to ask. Ask for referrals. Ask about their investor's experience and previous investments they have made. Ask what startups they have invested in and don't be afraid of asking the contact details of the founders. Any say investor will definitely answer these questions and have no problems to share with you the referrals, links, and even contact details of other founders in his portfolio in order for you to be safe. Number three, double check the information in the internet. Don't rely on the information from the website or even LinkedIn profile. And yes, I really mean this. LinkedIn does not have their KYC procedure. They simply don't check the profiles of the people registered there. And it is quite easy to make a fake LinkedIn profile and even, even fill it in with the relevant connections and uh, industrial networking, uh, social uh, connections. Uh, for quite a short period of time. So, if you are connected in the LinkedIn and you see that you have mutual connections there, please don't hesitate to ask your mutual connections if they know this person and what can they share about him or her. Speaking about website of the investment firm, I should recommend you first to check the address, phone numbers, and the information about team. Any same website should have this. 
information about the team should be quite informative and investment firms usually either upload their the links to the CV of uh, investment team, investment analytics, or uh, direct links uh, to the email address or the links to their LinkedIn profile. Also, active investment firms uh, usually have on the website the information about their investment focus and criteria, application form where the startup founder can apply for funding, or some descriptive information about how to apply and uh, what contacts to use. They usually also feature their previous investments and startups uh, in their portfolio, as well as uh, professional partnerships or membership in the professional associations. If some of this information is missing, please be especially careful. And I would say that this can be an alarm for you to pay more attention and uh, to start checking deeply. Maybe start checking their company name in the trade registry and Googling some other information about this company. Tip number four, follow the conversation flow. Real investor will always have plenty of questions about your startup about your business model, business plan, marketing strategy, how do you plan to execute your roadmap, etc., etc., etc. You will never make an investment decision based just on your pitch deck. He will want to discuss and ask additional questions in order to move forward. If anyone offers you an investment right after your first conversation or shortly after reading your pitch deck, then this is a huge red flag to be cautious about. And finally, tip number five, identify if the person wants your money instead of investing in your startup. The real investor will never ever ask you to pay anything upfront in order to invest in your startup. They never will ask you to pay for insurance charges or banking fees. And the, if the investor promises to invest in your startup, but then asks you to pay for anything, even if it is 100 bags or several thousands, be sure it is 100% scum. Let me tell you one of the widely used stories by scam investors. For example, they promise to invest in your startup two or five million. You get really excited. And then they say that to follow the official procedure they have to ensure this deal. There is uh, indeed uh, the insurance on the investment, but this is a different story. Investor will never ask you to pay for this. So imagine that you get an offer of two or five million of investment, but then you are asked to pay a small fee of, let's say, 1,000 euros. Please, if it happens, be sure that something is wrong. Real investor will never ask you to pay those fees. If it happened with you, don't make any transactions, stop the conversation and do your best to check his identity and verify his identity before even moving forward with the conversation. So stay safe and use the verification procedure in order to protect yourself, your startup and your money. Get your profile verified today. Don't delay it for the next day. And please, when next time you talk to someone who is not verified, refer them to the team so that we can all verify them quickly. A healthier community means a healthier communication. Until the next time.